So it is 2.48 on Thursday afternoon and we are leaving to go up north to Perry Sound tomorrow morning at 8, Friday morning at 8. And this is the engine that uh, is supposed to go in that thing and that's the quad that we're taking. So I just got my heads back, came back, um, the intake valves are completely shot. I can show you those here. Um, if you can see this little line of where it was actually wearing, this, this edge here is extremely sharp. So another, another 30, 40 hours of running it like that, and the head, this valve would actually go into the head too far, damage the head, and most likely snap the valve right here and, and completely destroy the pistons. So it's a pretty close fit. As you can see, the, uh, the valves are that close to the head when it's timed. So um, we caught it just in time. We're going to um, show you how to home the cylinders and uh, everything else has been cleaned and then start reassembling again. So we got new rings, new gaskets, new valves, valve seals, and um, yeah, there's a vacuum test that they do on the valves to make sure that they're sealed right, but I don't have those tools, so um, uh, the quad shop down the road did that for me. So yeah, here we go. These cylinders are all clean, but you can see how shiny they are inside, and they're just glazed, and what we want is a cross hatch. I don't know if you can see that cross hatch on the bottom where the piston doesn't hit. So what we do is a hone, very simple. It's a small bore, so you want to back the spring off all the way so there's not much tension on it. And then hit it with some uh, white lithium grease or some fluid film, uh, something, something that uh, doesn't score the cylinders. And feel free to spray it inside the cylinders as well. And what we want is a, is a cross hatch inside. We, uh, the college told us a square piece of paper, if you, if you stick it in there, um, a good cross hatch is a perfect square. And to get that, you want to move fast up and down with a very low RPM on the, uh, on the drill. So let's, here we go. You see where the lines are in the in the grease? That's a pretty good pattern. You see, I'm starting to score it, but not nearly deep enough, so I can put a little bit more pressure on my spring. You can start to see that that scratching pattern inside. I still want it more than that, so I'm going to put a little more tension on it yet. Um, I haven't, you can still see where the piston stopped. You can see the line at the bottom. Um, you can see the, uh, the lines here. So I'm not taking any material off, but I'm also not scratching it enough. So we're gonna do it a bit more. You can see the cross hatch. I'm very happy with that. I'll give the ring something to grab onto again. You wanna get the cross hatch as quick as you can, as few times as possible, and that eliminates uh, any chance of taking too much material off. So here we go. So I wanted to wait until I got my new piston ring set to, before I snapped those rings off. If they were wrong, then uh, I'd have to use the old rings to get going tomorrow. But by putting the new one on top of the old one, they look to be the same size. So now I can take these rings off and do it by hand. Uh, or you can use a piston ring expander. Try to open them up and, and take them out. Don't, uh, don't confuse them with the new ones. Now a good way to clean the rings is take take the old ring and just bend it open and just take it in the groove and just run it along. If there's any carbon build up behind the piston, this is a good way to get inside the groove and clean that ring out perfectly. And uh, also not to confuse which the new rings with the old rings. And you can do that for the top two compression rings and also for the oil ring. But these pistons look actually really clean. Do that for both sides. Perfect. So we want to look for piston ring end gap. Um, can't assume that everything is right from the package, especially with all the aftermarket companies. So take, take your brand new rings and just stick them in the uh, cylinder, on the top of the cylinder. Take off your top groove on the uh, piston and then putting that out of the way, put your cylinder on upside down using the piston to push the ring in until it bottoms out and hits that ring. Then you've got your ring perfectly square inside your cylinder. 
Now you can see the gap and you can measure your, your ring gap. So this is the uh, second ring from the top and we want between 11 and 17 thou is um, the perfect uh, end, end gap. Um, if it's bigger than that, you can't add material, but if it's too small, what will happen when it heats up is it'll bind and it'll score your cylinders and uh, um, wear it out. So if it's too tight, you can take a file and just file the uh, ends of one to just give you that extra thou or so. My 11 thou, I can squeeze that in nice. So it's somewhere between 11 and 17, that's all I need to know. Um, that one's good to go. You can do the same with your top ring. And your top ring has to be between 7 and 8 and 11 thou. Um, so yeah, here we go. I like brake clean and an airline to clean off the cylinders. I'm going to spray it again before we put it on. I'm going to take the last of my rings out off the piston and then put the rings on. Okay, so we've cleaned the piston. Uh, we've got this area nice and clean. Uh, we need a little bit of oil on the on the in the grooves of the piston just a tiny little bit here to get in behind then we start with our oil ring start in the middle now you see on the piston there's an F this opening we want at the back of the exact opposite of the F so stick that in the bottom groove there and they butt up to each other Just like so. Now we can do our little rings. There's no up and down to these oil rings, so you can put them on wherever you want. Put the first one almost to the end of the, the valve indent on the F. And second one on the opposite corner on the F. Now these two are very important. RN goes on the very top and that's your second from the top ring. You want to use piston ring expanders on those. And this gap goes again on the opposite of the F. The top ring should have just an R on it, but if it doesn't, yeah, there's the R, very faint. But if you can't see it, there's a small taper on the top. What happens is compression goes in behind it and actually pushes the ring out. That's generally what that chamfer is for and is generally up. Uh, we're gonna put this facing right at the F. We're gonna put the gap right at the F. I'm gonna spin that one, that gap to the top. Okay. Now we're ready to put our gasket on. We want to make sure the both dowels are in place, that we didn't forget it. The gasket only goes on one way. Um, it doesn't fit. It has to go this way so the lettering is up. And I love my gasket tack. Just spray a little bit on both sides. Just a tiny dusting. And it does exactly what it says. It makes it just tacky. And I've had very good luck with no leaks with this stuff. I use it on water pumps, um, valve cover gaskets, oil pan gaskets. It takes a while to dry. It's not like you're rushing to get it done. But uh, very handy stuff. Okay, we're ready for a cylinder. We're going to spray the cylinder down with just some brake clean. Make sure it's nice and clean and dry. I'm going to lube the cylinder up real nice. Can't have too much oil. It'll smoke when you start, but that's okay. I'm going to put a little more oil on the outside of the rings here. Making sure not to spin the, the rings around anyway. And you don't want to put too much on because that'll get on the gasket. Now very carefully, uh, it's a nice taper on the inside here that will feed the rings in, but you still have to push the rings as you go. Um, you start by feeding your cam chain and guide through. Square up your piston. And you can start your piston. 
on the gaps in the in the piston here allow you to kind of push on the rings and compress it a little bit. There's one. Do not force anything. If it doesn't want to go, better to start over than crack a ring. It should just drop in over top. That's all my buddy's saying. Are you ready, Rich? Are you ready? <laughs> We're leaving in about 15 hours. And it is about 5 o'clock in the afternoon here on a Thursday. Right on. And then now I can just torque these bolts right here to hold it in place when we get ready to put the head on. Here we go. Okay, we've got our cylinder on here. We're ready to put the head gasket and the head on. Uh, I put the back cylinder or the front cylinder together already because um, I uh, tried to make the video smooth for you, make sure I got my tools lined up, and I've never actually rebuilt a quad engine before. So if it doesn't run when we're done, just ignore everything I've said, but um, I'm feeling pretty confident so far. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, the water jacket. This transfers the water from the um, crankcase over to the head. Just put a little bit of oil on uh, both ends, get the O-rings nice and clean, and pop it in place. It sucks when you have the whole thing together and you find those laying on your bench, and you get to take it all apart again. The timing chain guide comes out there's a notch on there which one comes out this one comes out um, we've got R for rear and F on front so the front cylinder sits in this notch the rear cylinder sits in this back notch to guide the chain and you can't you can't physically get it down any lower to get the F on there if you can that's really impressive um, but <laughs> you're doing it wrong so once that's in there, we can put our head gasket on, making sure that you've got both your dowels in place. Uh, sucks when you find the dowels on your bench. The head gasket will only go on one way and the, uh, the rings go down. They go down. You don't put anything on the head gasket, no, no gasket tack, no silicone, nothing. Just put the head gasket on, feeding your chain through. Okay. You've got a rebuild head and you need special tools to do the valves we've had the valves done he uh, broke he took two broken studs out for me from the exhaust and uh, um, new valve guides and redid the seats and put new valves in it so we can feed that through on your flywheel there's a mark there's you'll see a T uh, that, that and you want to point the T at this little notch in the housing here and then there'll be an R for the rear cylinder and an F for the front cylinder so when you put the front cylinder together you want to be able to see the F and when we're, we're doing the rear cylinder right now we want to stare at the R that means that this piston is at top dead center of the compression stroke right now so we're gonna feed the chain through and there are little guides here Add a little bit of lube to the threads of the bolt. I just snug those down by hand. I don't like using impacts on cylinder heads at all. And just to be sure you want to see that uh, cylinder head, you should be able to draw it down, um, whatever little resistance there is, by hand. If you can't, there's something wrong, take it apart. And look, first torque for the head bolts is 18 foot-pounds. And you can cut that in half. I usually put it to 18 on the torque wrench until it's kind of snug. Work my way around. Work my way around again until everything clicks. Final torque is 36 foot-pounds. Again, star pattern. And we can put our cam in. Arrow goes up with the weights going all the way in on their own from the spring. And the lines have to line up with the top of the head. Now this is a decompressor for um, startup. These weights come out and work on the exhaust valves to open them up earlier. They have to retract when it speeds up. Um, if it's got no compression, this is the first thing to check to make sure that these weights don't uh, aren't stuck open or stuck closed for hard, hard starting. So we want to clean that off. Oil that up good. That's exactly what we want. So if we take it with the arrow up, 
keeping in mind that when the tension goes on the guide, it will rotate it as the chain gets tight there. So I think that's it. So you need this arrow on the cam pointing up with your marks lined up there, and then you can put the cam uh, or the chain tensioner on. And this is this does not back off, so you have to take the nut off the top and take the spring out. And then there's a pin in there. Take the pin out. Now you can take your dentist pick that you got for free on this checkup and just retract that. Now you can pop your tensioner in, tighten the bolts. 8 mil or uh, 5 sixteenths. That's two. These bolts down here are 87 inch pounds. Just want to take a little dab of silicone and just put it around the outside. There's no gasket for the valve cover, so spread that out nice and evenly and thin. Make sure that's nice and clean. These centered ones are going to go one. You are actually nice enough to give you the pattern on the casing. One, uh, 87 inch pounds. And there's one. Five, and 78 inch pounds. Okay. With the uh, top dead center compression, if your mark is still lined up, uh, the intake valves get set to 3 thou and the exhaust gets set to 7. And it's really tricky to get, um, get 3 thou in there, so I'm finding the only way to do it is to back the, back the valve off and slide your feeler gauge in there and just snug it and feel that resistance so you can slide it out and then keep it right there. There's your three thou. It's pretty low in there. And just snug so you can, and you can see there it's too tight. Just a hair more and I can slide it out. So it's pretty, pretty particular. So don't move the screwdriver once you've got it. And make sure that you've got that tiny little bit of wiggle. There's your three thou. It's not a whole lot. Seventy-eight inch pounds for the valve cover adjustment caps. And there it is, back together. And get ready to put it back in the machine. You can keep watching the video if you want, but really it's the exact opposite to put it back in as you did when you took it out. If you want to keep it staring at my ugly face, you can keep watching, but I'm gonna button up this side and throw her back in. Here we go. This is an old spark plug that I just took the electrode out of and brazed a fitting onto the spark plug. Now I got my own special compression tester. It's 658 on the night before we leave. It's back together. I've got 70 pounds of compression on the back cylinder and I got 60 on the front. Anywhere between 40 and 70 is acceptable. So we're gonna throw it back in again and hopefully be ripping around the yard in about an hour and a bit. So. Here we go. So, I gotta do that back axle first. Okay. There we go. I must be getting stuck on the mount or something. I think that's it, Luke. Yeah, I think that is it. Yeah, that's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> it is 9.30, everything's back together. Just putting the last of the plastics on. Fired it up once already. That was, uh, we didn't have coolant in it. I had to wait to put coolant in it and we forgot to videotape it, so here we go.
pedal's nice. Didn't sound like that for a long time. There we go. It is 10.07 and the quad's pretty well back together. Not bad, about five hours to rebuild the engine, at least the top half of it. And uh, put the engine back in again, put all these rotten plastics back together. This uh, quad has been through surgery a couple times, but she takes a shit kicking and keeps on kicking. So here we go, another 20 minutes or so, we can take her for a boot in the air. So, 10 o'clock at night, Luke, what do you think? Badass! <laughs> oh, so, so, you took it for a rip, what do you think? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Never, better, better than it was? Oh, man, never, never seen anything like it. Nice, nice. Wow, is that ever fast? Invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. <laughs>